Hey guys, welcome back to my Emerald Open Run, Emerald Open 3, featuring Java the Griffin as my avatar. This is the round of 32 in the knockout stage, and we are against Brother Quang this time. Another player that I was not familiar with prior to this match. So let's take a look at his team. Uh, it actually looks pretty good. Lax is, just like in the previous round, a difficult matchup for us. We do not have a normal resist, so... Whether he goes for Curse 3 Attacks or Choice Band or Curse Rest or whatever, it is absolutely a threatening poke to us. Uh, Starmie is a poke that we can wall forever if it tries to attack us and we don't have spikes, so its rapid spin doesn't matter. So Starmie is a poke that I think is not super relevant against us. Uh, Hariyama could be a good poke. Uh, not only can it wall some of our special stuff defensively if he goes that way, but it could also potentially be an offensive threat for sure. So we got to keep that guy in mind. Uh, Flygon is a poke I'm like 0% worried about. We have so much potential ice coverage. Uh, I just don't think it's good. I, I think Flygon and Mence are both not great in this format. That is that is my opinion. It has felt that way all along. We just have so much ice coverage. I think Flygon is going to have a really hard time doing much of anything uh he does have a spiker in glalie so our dawn fan is going to be obligated to be rapid spin again in this matchup uh and glalie with its ice coverage is again something that we can shut down but we have to be aware that it can use explosion and with no normal resist and or ghost uh if he does get an explosion off with glalie it's just gonna hit something uh and the same thing goes for wheezing wheezing is actually mildly threatening it uh, it can learn things like Taunt plus Will-O-Wisp. Uh, it also has Explosion, which again, if it explodes, it's going to hit something. Uh, and it can be pretty annoying for us defensively. Now, it doesn't take special hits super well. So if we're going to go the route of Bolt Beam coverage, for example, then obviously that is going to threaten the Weezing. But the issue that we run into, uh, say like the Raikou with Bolt Beam coverage or whatever, yes, it threatens the Weezing. But it's going to have a hard time with the Snorlax, especially if he goes, you know, HP, special defense, kind of heavy, and does in fact bring a rest set, then we're going to be walled for a long time by the Lax. And it would be the same issue with the Dragonite. If we were to go with, say, a set that we used in the previous round, if we use T-Wave, Heal Bell, Bolt Beam, that's a fine set against a lot of this stuff, but... Even though it threatens the Weezing, it is never going to break through the Lax. Uh, so the Lax and the Weezing actually had pretty good defensive synergy. They wall a lot of different stuff. So we have to kind of be careful with our threats to try to hit both of them and to have our team as a whole not be too shut off by one or the other. Uh, so the threats here, I think, are the Lax and the Hari almost exclusively wheezing is really annoying defensively but it's not a big threat offensively but like i said we have to be very careful with how we build because we could end up in a world where even though he has a hard time breaking through us we also have a hard time breaking through him so this is what we came up with as the prep for this match uh so we're going to lead with metacham again and there are it's a very simple reason for this we the philosophy with leads the whole time has been to figure out what the most threatening thing he is, he has is, what the worst thing, as far as we're concerned, is that he can do. Uh, and in this case, it would be either set up very early spikes with Glalie, or it would be to get his lax going early on, whether that means a free attack with Choice Ban, or he starts to curse up for free, or whatever it may be. Anything that lax does is a threat. So Metacham is the obvious deterrent for both of those. It threatens Glalie with its super effective attacks, and then it also is a huge threat to the Lax. But something that we did very differently this time, because any Metacham set that we brought up to this point would be very, very walled by the Weezing. It resists fighting, it has high defense, it takes Rock Slides and Shadow Balls just fine. Uh, hell, even Focus Punches don't do as much as you would think. Uh, so something crucial that we did this time is we actually gave it Psychic and we're opting for a Naughty Nature so we do not have our usual 
minus special attack. And we even put in some special attack EVs to make sure we get that two hit KO on Weezing. So we're using this Metacham as a breaker that hits both sides of the Lax Weezing defensive core. We thought that was very important. So with the lead, we're trying to deter Lax, deter Glalie, and make sure we have some play into the Weezing. So Raikou in this instance, we've opted for an aggressive subset. We're modest full special attack, which we don't get to do very often. Uh, there's not... Raikou is not incredible in this matchup, but it does... It, it threatens a lot. It doesn't get through the Lax, and it may or may not get through the Hariyama, but it destroys the Starmie, destroys the Flygon, destroys the Weezing. Uh, Hariyama, it depends on the set. You don't see it very often because it's not good in OU, but Hariyama does learn Earthquake. Uh, so if he goes with like a special defense heavy set, uh, heavy set and brings EQ, the Hari could be a deterrent to the Raikou. But we thought that it was enough of a threat, even if he does have some counterplay to it, to where the Raikou was better served offensively in this matchup. Uh, so for the Dragonite... For the reasons that we discussed before, we can't just go, say, Bolt Beam plus, like, Heal Bell Wave because then you get walled by the Lax. And if we go, if we went with a strictly physical set, sure, you kicked the crap out of the Lax, but now you have a problem with the Weezing. So we needed it to be some kind of a mixed set, and this is what we settled on. This, this is a set that I experimented with throughout the building process and always thought on paper was good but haven't had a chance to use it up until this point. But the Dragon Claws are pretty good against the Weezing, and as it happens, it's super effective against Flygon as well, so when we're not using Ice Beam in this spot, the Dragon Claw is a reasonable alternative. Uh, T-Wave is always good, always supports the team. We have some stuff like Dawn Fan and like Metacham that hit pretty hard but aren't necessarily the fastest. Uh, T-Wave is, is pretty busted. T-Wave is just one of the best moves in the game in this format and in OU. You just can't go wrong. Uh, the focus punches are obviously aimed for Lax. Bonus points that it hits Flygon, hits Glalie, whatever. But Lax is the biggest thing. Uh, again, the key here is to hit both sides of the Weezing Lax defensive core. Anything else is gravy. But the Dragon Claw and Focus Punch coverage hits anything on this team. And this is another team that does not have access to... Heal Bell or Aromatherapy, so you're going to see quite a few status moves on our end because it's something other than his natural cure mon that he just can't really deal with very well. So, uh, with my low tick, you're going to notice Dragon Breath here. Uh, again, we, we thought that flinging power around was very important in this case. Uh, you could argue, well, he, he's got a Flygon, why don't you have Ice Beam? Uh, the simple answer is we didn't think we needed it. The simple answer is we thought that we were padded enough all the way across the board against the Flygon to simply not need it. We thought that every single poke on our team could threaten the Flygon meaningfully and multiple pokes, whether it is the Regice, the Dawn Fan, the Dragonite, can tank Flygon hits and get them back. We just didn't think we needed it. We just didn't feel that damn threatened by the Flygon. Uh, I would also note that Ice is... Not a good attacking type into this team other than the Flygon. He is actually very, very padded defensively against it. Lax, if it has thick fat, resists ice. But even if not, it doesn't do a lot. Starmie always resists ice. Hariyama also, if it has thick fat, resists ice. And then Glalie always resists ice. So we are looking at up to four ice resists just to try to hit the one Pokemon, the Flygon. And Bayleaf is... Not a Pokemon, not something that we considered at all during the build. The Magmar may or may not come into play, but that's irrelevant for Ice Beam purposes. That's another thing that resists Ice, but uh, the Bayleaf was not a poke that we considered at all. We knew that it wasn't going to be used, uh, but I think that the average player, even the average competitive player, probably would have mindlessly thrown Ice Beam on my low tick here and just looked at the Flygon and called it good. Uh, but I think it's wrong in this case. I think a lot of the time that is a turn unless you get lucky and freeze them. I think a lot of the time when you click Ice Beam, it's going to be a very do-nothing turn. It's going to be letting them in for free, sacrificing tempo, and letting the other guy do something. So, 
like I said, we opted for Dragon Breath, which is a nice generic catch-all that, if it hits anything, if it paralyzes anything, that is good. Uh, the fact that it's super effective against Flygon is irrelevant. Surf would just do more anyway. It really is just to have a neutral move that isn't full-on resisted by half the damn team like Ice Beam would be that can randomly get para. And if it happens to get para on something like the Weezing, for example, then that is even better. Uh, and we went with the same philosophy here with Don Fan. Like I said, he does have a spiker in Glalie, so we're obligated to have Rapid Spin. EQ on Don Fan is mandatory. Uh, the Roar is a precautionary measure against the Snorlax, just as it was in the previous round. And Body Slam is a nice, generic, safe move. He does have things that come in on Earthquake, such as Flygon, such as Weezing. Uh, we don't have... Don Fan doesn't have any good move for Weezing. It just doesn't. Uh, there's no hidden power that you can go with. Rock Slide, what have you. Uh, Don Fan is effectively completely, completely, completely walled. Completely shut off by Weezing. Uh, so we thought that Body Slam was one of the only things that we could do to make it so Weezing is not a free switch into Don Fan every single time. And so we can punish it more than zero. Uh, so if we can land a power on that, it's something he can't remove. The Weezing is almost certainly not going to have rest. So we thought that gave us more than zero play and made it so we weren't completely walled when that matchup comes up. And the Reg Ice, which is one of the most straightforward pokes. We've used this spread or something very similar to it multiple times throughout the tour. Modest, max HP, mock spe uh, max special attack. T-Wave is always good, supports the team. We've got rest. We don't have Heal Bell in this particular game, but he really doesn't need it. He just walls everything on his own. Reg Ice OP, and then Bolt Beam combo, one of which is Stab. Reg Ice has been all reliable throughout the tour. So now that you've seen the team, and now that you know why we opted for this, all that's left to do is watch the game. Switch those sides, Jabba on the bottom, Among Us, Blaster on the top, and obviously, he gets out of the way. I don't think that this Brick Break is good. I think Jabba misses an opportunity here to just click Substitute. Uh, if, he gives, if he gives his opponent credit for having half a brain, then he should know that his opponent knows that Metacham can just outspeed and one-hit KO him here. Uh, nobody's ever going to keep Glalie in and click Spikes to just die to a Brick Break here. I feel like the Weezing switch is so obvious, and it's such a good fighting counter that I feel like Jabba clearly should have clicked Substitute here. I think the Brick Break's pretty bad, and I gave him shit about this after the game, but I absolutely think that this turn one was not what he was supposed to be doing, but it's what he did. So here's Weezing. We're going to substitute now, trying to block Will-O-Wisp, but he gets Sludge Bombed instead. He's going to pull back to Milo, and now it's Will-O-Wisp, so Jabba flat out getting outplayed in the early stages of this game. Should have subbed on turn one. Uh, game, And then turn two, turn three, he gets outpredicted. He gets attacked on the sub-turn, and then Will-O-Wisp on the non-sub-turn, because as it turns out, hindsight 2020, he could have subbed again. Uh, so, so far, not that we're getting crushed by any means, but Jabba has been outplayed on all three of the first turns. Don't love the start on our end. So Milo's burnt. Here comes Glalie. We're going to Dragon Breath that, which does like nothing, and we don't get the power, which is unfortunate. So now a spike is going to come down, and Surf here is actually not even a two-hit KO. So if he wants to spike again, he can do that, and of course he's going to. Uh, so we recover there just in case, but he just spiked again. And now we're going to surf into the lax, which takes like nothing, and it's got lefties. So I would say this is a very bad start for Jabba and not where we want to be. I don't love the return if Curse was an option. I think Curse should have been the play for our opponent. Return is never going to be bad, but it's not that punishing either. And getting this rapid spin off was definitely a sigh of relief, but I have no clue why Jabba stayed in there. I think the thought process was there's no way we're going to stay in because Ice Beam kills us. So our opponent's going to spike knowing that there's no way that we're going to stay in. Therefore, I'm going to stay in and click Earthquake. Uh, but it's just another mind game or 50-50 turn that, again, 
Jabba is outplayed by this guy, so I don't know who Brother Quang is or Among Us Blaster, but so far he's outplaying the crap out of Jabba, and I'm not thrilled with the way that we're playing this game. Uh, we're definitely behind at this point, without a doubt. So here's the Raikou follow-up, and Raikou is not that exciting in this match. As you can see, Thunderbolt just 23% to lax. Yawn there is going to be blanked. I don't think he should be Yawn. I think this is a build mistake. I think he clearly should be some kind of curse set. Whether it's curse three attacks, curse rest two attacks. It's weird that he's both curse and Yawn, but here we are. And we get a T-wave off, but he's going to hit us with a 64% return. So Jabba's going to fish for full power, which he luckily gets, but definitely feel like Jabba has been outplayed up to this point. Return does get off this time, and we land a Focus Punch and a crit, which frankly feels like Jabba getting bailed out when he's very far behind. So now Regice comes in. MVP. Going to block the Starmie off forever, and you can't even freeze it. There's the Thunderbolt. Glalie's got one turn to live. He has to make the choice. Do you want to spike or do you want to boom? And I don't agree with this decision for our opponent. I think it would have been better to spike, especially with our spinner down. But he sees it differently and he goes for boom. Milo's going to die even through Marvel Scale via Rock Slide there. And we've got ourselves a 4-4. Four to four. We sub up. Hari comes in. He's clearly not as special defensive as I thought that he would be. And that bodes well. He could have Earthquake here, but he goes for Cross Chop, which is an interesting choice. Uh, you may miss, you may crit, I mean, I don't know. I, I personally would have had Earthquake on my Hariyama to counter Raikou, for sure. But our opponent sees it differently, and now Jabba is starting to really stabilize this game. Regice, as we discussed, is going to indefinitely wall Starmie here, regardless of what the set might be. Uh, he's going to miss some inaccurate moves, Thunder and Hydro Pump, but it really doesn't matter. I assure you they would bounce off Regice. There you go. Hydro Pump is the best thing he can do, and it's 28%. Now it's Flygon's turn. Rock Slide. Fishing for Crit or Flinch gets neither. There's the Ice Beam, and our opponent is down to just the Wheezing. Sludge Bomb, sure. And now we have stuff that's faster than Weezing that hits Weezing. Such as Psychic Metacham. Such as Faster T-Bolt from Raikou. Such as Faster Dragon Claw from Dragonite. It's over at this point, and it wasn't so close at the end. Uh, but in my opinion, this is the, the worst played game by Jabba out of the entire run. I think he really made mistakes at the beginning and let his opponent get ahead when he didn't have to. And I think he made this harder than it needed to be. But I also think our opponent didn't build perfectly. I think Yawn is a really curious choice. I think no Earthquake on Hari is a curious choice. I think Thunder Hydro Pump on Starmie. Using the Starmie offensively just makes no sense to me. It's always going to be walled forever and ever by the Red Ice. I think you would have gotten a lot more value from the Starmie having it be like a recover t-wave set i know what i would have done this is going to sound a little wonky i honestly if i were him i would have gone recover t-wave confuse ray which starmie does learn and i think that actually would have been a menace for us because the starmie outspeeds everything other than the raikou and the confuse ray the parafusion nonsense actually would have been really obnoxious for us so i think that would have been a better option for him but using it as an off star into the reg ice was never going to get anything done so, I don't think Jabba played super well, but I don't think our opponent built super well. And in the end, we managed to get there. So, we are going to be off now to the top 16, and that will be the next video. If you've enjoyed the content, please do hit that like button, and I will see you there.